morning, Nick. Off and the road man, Mr. David. How are you doing this morning, sir? Yeah, I'm really good, really good. I had a nice deep sleep. Uh, yeah, feeling good today. So looking forward to it. Town's this. not flooded anymore. What's that? Is the town still flooded? A uh, little bit, a little bit. It's slowly it's dwindling away now. Flooded. It's yeah, we, ju- we, we should just all be bloody mermaids, mate, over this way. So. Yeah, damn right. Damn right. <laughs> now let's see who's in the chat before we talk through the Champions League games from last night. And we've got some interesting things to say. We got Mr. Rodriguez, Mr. Sweden's good to see a buddy YouTube member. We got number one Agambar in the world who has finally been able to change his name. He's back to where he was. We have Border Da, Border Da, Border Da, Colin. Good to see you. Sean Slater, YouTube member. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Guardians of the Pombo. We have Rady in as well. The Pombos are in the house. YouTube members. Andrew Gregory, good to see you, buddy. YouTube member, good to see you. Shem Tang, good to see you. Good morning, Ben. David, wow, a couple of brilliant CL games. Absolutely, we'll talk about them. We have Radiant, so he might not be here for long. Got a meeting. Have a good meeting. We have Fran, good to see you, Fran. YouTube member. We have MC saying good morning. Good to see you, MC. We have Woo! Woo! Good to see you. We got Joris, YouTube member. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, Tottenham on tour of Thailand. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff. Hopefully, having a great holiday. We got Nick. Good to see you, Nick. Good to see you. Benjamin Foster, Craig O'Sullivan, a Tavrick and Wembley one, and of course, Kate Rixham. Let's get into that. Which game would you like to talk about first? We had two cracking games in the Champions League yesterday. Let's start with the Manchester City game. That was. <laughs> That was a juggernaut of a football match yesterday. That is the way football should be. Goals, good football, drama. What a football match, right? Yeah, it, it was outstanding, to be fair. And you're seeing two tactically masters of the football. You know, Ancelotti and <clears throat> Pep. It was unbelievable. You're seeing yeah. two teams full of fantastic players, fantastic talent, and... I gotta say though, Bernardo Silva's goal, mate. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean that IQ of that man is unbelievable, and the fact that he's leaving in the in the summer, pretty much going to Barcelona, yeah. crazy. Because that goal, you rarely see goals like that because yeah. the distance it was, you don't see players wanting to take that type of shot on. Yeah. But he's seen it. He's seen the pl- the keeper shift his weight, and what a goal! That was unbelievable. And then, it's then very smart football, isn't it? That was, it I mean, really is. Same away goals didn't mean anything because that goal should mean because how so? It's just you, yeah. Wall was suspect as well, but you've got to be yeah. you've got to be smart enough to see that the, the, the wall was suspect, and he put it in the back of the net. That's why yeah. I, I quite like away goals, David, isn't it? Because away goals like that and making little tiny little genius points away from home to get an edge in the game is what makes the Champions League the Champions League. But it isn't. They've been gone for a few years now. Brilliant game of football. And we're going to talk about Luka Modric, 40 years of age, dictating games of football. Still, sign him up if he's out of contract at the end. Sign him up. Yeah. I would love to have him around the squad just to be able to share his knowledge. I don't even know if he'd be able to do it in the Premier League anymore at his age. But Champions League against Manchester City, one of the best teams in the world, dictating play like he's 20. He, he's the best. He's just... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I disagree a little bit. Like I think he could still do it in the Prem. He's that sort of player that just has pure, natural talent and ability. Yeah. And... In sometimes, like in the Prem, you don't need to be this young, up and coming player. You could be an older player like a Modric, and like you've seen then, still dictate games. He is unreal, and I'm. It's so annoying that we he left when he did for us, but you can understand why he's seen the way we were going to go in the end. Otherwise, he was ending up at Chelsea. Yeah, and but yeah, it's unbelievable. He's he's. Every midfielder in the world wants to be Modric. That that for me. Yeah. Because he has everything. He can tackle. He can take on players. He can box the box. He can defend. But mostly, his passing, his his vision, 
Yeah. It, there's rarely anyone in the Prem who can match him for vision. You know what I mean? There's a handful of people, the De Bruyne's, the Bruno Fernandez's people are who can match him for that quick lock pinpoint pass. It's and, it's the guy, isn't it? It's yeah, like Glenn Hoddle back in the day. He's got that, yeah. he's in that bracket. It is in that it's that elite football bracket of just having elite IQ and elite skill. And he's had he's had years to perfect it. And yeah. He's he's a sage now. It's like Yu-Gi-Oh when he plays the time wizard. <laughs> He's, he's just become an old wizard that knows yeah. what he's doing. And that's a Yu-Gi-Oh reference on a football show. Who would have thought yeah. it? Who would have thunk it? Morning bruise for you, mate. Morning bruise. <laughs> but it's great to see the Champions League like this, isn't it? The Champions League is just such a magical thing for that reason. It's just the best football teams going toe-to-toe with each other and just having a slobber knocker. And that's what you want to see, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, this is what Champions League is and was always meant to be. Is the cream, the creme de la creme, as they say. Yeah. And games like that, not boring games, not nil nils, not games where two teams are too scared to go at each other. You want to see games that's where one good, that's one of the good things about removing away goals because t- away teams actually want to attack now because they know a goal's a goal at the end of the day. A goal's a yeah. goal. That's it, exactly. And it's great to see. I mean, there was two games tonight that last night, sorry, that were really, really good games. Yeah. And it's just great to see. This is why I'm hoping we obviously end up in uh Yu Gi Oh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Modders just, the blue eyes. Just white while I'm there, just while I'm there. <laughs> Yu Gi Oh. Just but, to show yeah. one. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, when it comes to the Champions League. This is what we want to watch. As a neutral, not being in it, you want to see really good games. You want to see goals. You want to see dramas. You want to see everything. When we were in it, when we had our run to the final, I mean, as a fan, to be in that situation was unbelievable. And Mm. I want that again. It's been a couple of years now, and I want it again. I want to get back in there. I want them feelings. I want them games where... You score a goal, they score a goal. I just want a cup run again, David. I don't care. Yeah. I want to be in the cup, going for a final, Levy sacking the manager before a final. Uh, (laughs) I want I want my Tottenham back. Mate, I don't I don't think, yeah, right now, if if we were on a cut run to a final, yeah, right? And uh, Levy tried to sack Pastor Coglu, yeah. I don't think he'd have the ability, mate. I literally think the players, everything, right? We tie Levy up until after the final. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. But yeah, I, I mean, I want it, my it, Tottenham back. I yeah. want my Tottenham back. Sacking managers before finals. What a time to be alive! Oh, um, what a time! What a time to be alive! Let's talk about the Gooners, then, shall we? They're a bunch of cheats. Absolutely. They they had a real chance yesterday against a really poor Bayern Munich team. To be fair to Bayern, they had a half a decent game yesterday. Um, Eric Dyer being full... Eric Dyer, how I don't miss that in the middle of our defence. That first goal, my God, that was prime Eric Dyer. Hands yeah. behind his back, nowhere near his striker, back of the net. Great goal from Saka. you got to give it to him. But after that, absolutely, they were an embarrassment. Falling over, diving. They, Bayern should have won that game. Bayern should have won that game at the end of the day. They absolutely should. Good to see you, Marvin, probably. Marvin, good to see you. Thank you for having me on your show yesterday with Ash. Always a great laugh. Always a great laugh. Um, Yeah, they were. That's a, yep, same old Arsenal. Always cheating. I'm glad it's back. Football is returning to where it should be. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I, it's it's the way they are at the moment. If you watch any game they play, right? Saka will do it constantly. He gets touched. He's down on the ground. He's always rolling. He's doing all that. And he's always got this thing, yeah, right? And a lot of people have clicked onto it now and I've seen a lot of videos. If he has a stinker of a game, because to be fair, by that goal, Saka was pretty poor. Yeah. yeah. When he has a stinker of a game, he always does a stupid little limp at the end of the match as if he's injured. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? You're not injured. 
stop playing about, right? And trying to get this sympathy, like, oh, oh, I'm injured. I am. That's why I was completely and utterly shit. Yeah. That, get a grip, right? You yeah. know, you are a fantastic player. Saka yeah. is. Great player. Stop doing these stupid little things and just play your game. That, at the end of the match, trying to draw the ref to give a penalty when you jumped, spreaded your leg as much as possible, miles away from the keeper to make contact with the keeper was never going to be given as a penalty. If that was, then I'd be done with football because nowhere in a million years would that be a penalty. Right? Speaking you of penalties have that should have been given, yeah. that was a joke. Which one? The, the Bayern Munich penalty that wasn't given. My oh, yeah, at the God. end. How can you be that? Thick. Come no, on, the man. ref admitted. No, the ref admitted it. Yeah, the ref admitted. Yeah, that the reason he didn't give it because Tuchel said this. The reason he didn't give that penalty is because he classed it as a schoolboy mistake. It's ridiculous. But that's not the rules. The whistle blowed. It was in play. He picked it up. It's a penalty. It's a penalty, regardless if it's a schoolboy mistake. Regardless if the players didn't know. That is the rules, and f right, fair to use the ref, right? He had an all right game. Yeah. But them two it's mistakes not, and not blocking Sam. Harry McCoy said it in, in commentary. He said it. I'm having a re the ref's having a really good game tonight, and um, whoever the, the main commentator was said, you're going to regret that. And he, <laughs> yeah. did, he did. It's the curse of the commentator. Yeah. It's the curse of a commentator. Always. It, that was a such a penalty. It was ridiculous. Yeah, and yet Arsenal fans are crying over the fact that Sackers weren't given. Like, get a grip, right? Seriously. You had the chance to beat Bayern at home in yeah. the most perfect situation ever because no, Bayern no, had no fans. Yeah. They had no fans in the stadium. You're at home. Everyone that's making noise is your fans. And you had the perfect opportunity. And again, right, Arsenal bottled that game in a sense. I'm not saying they fully did. A draw against Bayern is uh, that's oh, okay. Well to draw against one of the biggest, the most elite teams. Yeah. In, but they should have that's won that game. Bayern were they drew to a team with Eric Dyer. Yeah, that's it. And another thing as well, you've seen the mentality, and this is where Arsenal fans need to be not overly worried, but need to be a bit humble. Dubious now coming up to the end of the season because David Rayer, that first goal was all David Rea's fault. Yeah. Why is your keeper up just near the halfway line when your defender's getting the ball and giving him no options? Mm. He gave Gabriel zero options. Yeah. Now the pass out and the miss by Rice, where they buy and get the ball, and they want to counter-attack then. And for me, that's where it is, that mentality of what we were talking about the other day, where have Arsenal got ridden, rid of that mentality of struggling when big games come yeah. along. Like I said, this game for them against Bayern was set perfectly. No fans. Bayern struggling like mad. And Arsenal with no injuries, fully fit team. Yeah. And yet, you do that. You you struggle. The Arsenal defence will worry you. Hey, David, there's no Serge Napri next game. There's no Alfonso Davis. They've got no excuse... They've got no excuse for not winning that game in Munich. I don't care. Even with they've no. got no excuse. They've got their fully fit team. They've got no suspensions. They should win that game. But I don't think they, they will. Should. They, they I should. Don't. Then they're not ready for this level. At the, the elite level of football, they showed they're not ready for it. Because that that, that the goal the, for them, the penalty, that that was that was terrible defending. That, yeah. that, it, it was so unlike that team because that team has defended brilliantly all season. That was so unlike them to be so schoolboyish and be so arrogant going forward and leaving that much space in for players like Nabri and Sane. I didn't like Sane's performance. Everyone said that Sane had a really good game yesterday. I thought it was wasteful. I thought it was selfish. Yeah. I thought it was arrogant. I think, why don't they pass to Harry Kane? He's in the middle of the pitch. It's Harry Kane. And they keep on trying to take on a million players and score themselves. It's so yeah. arrogant. But you don't let those two players have that much space because they're just going to burn you of pace. They've got so much pace. Yeah. 
And this is what should be a worrying for Arsenal fans is because they're now going to, um, is it the Allianz? Yeah. Bayern, Bayern Stadium. Allianz Arena. Yeah, where <laughs> they're going to have the Bayern fans there, which means yeah. Bayern have their noise then. Yeah. Not the Arsenal noise. Now, if you can't beat Bayern in where they lost against a team that hasn't won a game in what? Against Bayern in yeah. nine years. Yeah. Bayern were on the edge. And this is what I was saying about when it comes to North London derbies, when it comes to Champions League games, it's one game where yeah. if your mentality isn't right, you can be punished. Arsenal played like we have this season, where it's attack, 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 possession, 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 counter-attack, it's a goal. Yeah. And that should be worrying for Arsenal fans. They should be sitting there and thinking, you know what, maybe, you know, we should be not opening our mouths so much because we're top of the league. Yeah. Because this running now that you've got, if your mentality isn't right, like we've seen against you lose Bayern, this game, you could lose the entire season. That could be that could yeah. be such a hammer blow, such a kidney punch. It's, oh, a, James a, Madison, it's a James Madison rabbit punch to the kidneys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Harry Kane elbow to a Gabriel. Harry Kane elbow to the kidneys. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Which, to be fair, I'm going to say it now, like, you know what I mean? For me, that should have been a red card. You don't yeah, elbow yeah. players in the throat. It was such a you red know, card. We, was... as fans, might enjoy it and laugh and stuff like that, but I'll say it here because we're unbiased on this channel. And if any Arsenal fans are watching, you cheat, but Harry Kane should have been sent off. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, Joris is saying, did you hear that Eric Dyer interview saying he deserves to be in the England squad? No, he doesn't. But he'll Eric get Dyer doesn't deserve to be nothing. a footballer. That defending for the first goal was prime Eric Dyer. I was just like, it was like a, it was like a cuddly blanket. Hello, my friend. I yeah. miss you so much. But then it's with another team doing it. It was so <laughs> bad. It was yeah, so it, Eric Dyer. It's funny. Standoff defending is the worst style of defending you can have. Yeah. You need to attack players, especially when they're in a position like that. If Eric Dyer comes out more to Saka, Saka doesn't bend that ball in. Eric Dyer covered the ball for Saka, and we've seen it so much with Tottenham. Eric Dyer covered the ball from the keeper so Saka could place that ball easier. Because yeah. Saka could see the goal. Yeah, The keeper can't see Saka because Eric Dyer's in the way. And it's just amateur defending. That was an amazing game, Kev. Oh, yeah, it was, was a brilliant yeah. game of football. But I only I only watched the Arsenal game because Eric Dyer was playing. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> the only reason I watched it because I wanted to see what he was going to do, and it, it, he didn't disappoint me. No, he didn't disappoint me. Uh, I can't believe we get we got money for him. I can't believe we I got know. money for him. Uh, oh, tell me um, about it. I can't believe two shall plays him, but yeah. <laughs> You know, it's it's weird. You know, I mean, I've seen him start games over King Ming Jay, which for me, before he signed for Bayern, I well wanted King Ming Jay. Yeah. He's not looked that good at Bayern. He really hasn't. I don't think he It doesn't suit to no. the system. I think he's a more progressive footballer. But more we'll progressive, see next yeah. year. Because um, uh, he was brilliant at Napoli and they play very progressive football. Um, yeah. In a high press, when Arsenal transition from a low press to a high press, that's where gaps between the lines appear. And people have seen that now. Uh, if I'm Postacoglu, I'm playing exactly the way Bayern Munich did against them. If I'm um, if I'm any team, you see how Bayern yeah. Munich played against them, and that's how you play against them because they were so so vulnerable to that um, to that um, that counter attack. That but just like we are, we seen it where Pep changed against us, and he went counter attacking. He has an abundance of attacking players, but Pep played that counter-attacking football. Yeah. He allowed his defenders to defend, moved out quickly, on the break, go for it, just run. And we struggled with it. And teams like us, teams like Arsenal, they have the vulnerabilities. They really do. And you buy in Tuchel, he, 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 he's seen that and he, he played to that. Yeah. And look what happened. Two counter-attacks, two goals. I know yeah. one was a penalty, but it came off a counter attack. Counter -attack. Yeah. So breaking quickly with purpose and getting a penalty. Yeah, that's it exactly. That's and the type of football I love watching though. Not so much the way Bayern Munich played, um, because I don't necessarily like ten men behind the no, ball the no. entire game. I love that counter attacking style of football. For me, counter attacking football is so 
exciting when it's quick. I remember Portsmouth played, at, Portsmouth played us under Harry Redknapp and they scored a goal in under like 30 seconds. They broke and yeah. they scored in 30 seconds, something like that. I love that. It's so fast and you don't know what hit you when you break that quickly with pace. Um, yeah. yeah, I agree, Tony. I agree. Yeah, um, he won't. And that, that, that's the issue with Postacoglu is that maybe it's because it's his first season he's just trying to do what he's doing and everything, but sometimes well, you need one, a tactical one Spurs switch. Kings TV, if one of our moderators can put the link for Spurs Kings TV in our in our um in our chat, um Ange Postacoglu came out and said, I'm not doing tactics this year. What I am doing this year is getting a philosophy of football together, and then next season that's when I hammer in my tactics. I want them to get get them playing the philosophy first. Next year was when we get the tactics in, which is a it's actually when you think about it, it's actually a good idea. It means you you because you're not confusing them with too many ideas. But we've got to at half a season, almost a full season in, we should start looking at little tactical changes. We should be little starting to breadcrumb them in a little bit of breadcrumbs on the top of it, just to yeah. start it off. Just the biggest one for me that we need to start sorting out is set pieces attacking yeah. and defending because they are dreadful. Our set pieces are horrendous. Last season, what we were like top with goals scored from set pieces. Now, when was the last time we did? Yeah, can't remember. Can't remember. No, but yeah, Sometimes I agree. I can't remember most things to be honest, but no. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with Joseph. If we get the right players in, we could be looking at a really, really good season, especially if the football under Ange is tactically switched at times if he starts playing the things. Oh, but well, there you go. Then then, the, then yeah. if that's the case, we should be looking forward to next season under Ange if we get the right players in. I mean, we've been recently linked with a player now. Good sources have come out and said that we're looking at a player, and that's that Nico Williams winger. Yeah. Uh, he's got a seven. I think it's forty-six million he's release. Calls, I think international, so. isn't he? But he sounds like a Welshman. Does he? I've never heard him speak. Nico Williams sounds like a Welshman. Well, there is. They've got the Nico Williams who plays for Forex, haven't you? Exactly. He he yeah. sounds like a Welshman. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. When we when we were first ever when this ever first came up, yeah, right. And You're we like, were saying we're linked with Nico Williams. I was like, yes, another Welshman. I could wind up the Spurs fans with my players. <laughs> and then you found out, oh, are we Spanish? Oh, there we are. I was like, oh, gutted, gutted. But no, we're linked with him. If we get him, the, fantastic. You got the ice cream and the chocolate out, <laughs> and you're like. And you were, you were, you were, you was it? You were stroking your Wales flag. <laughs> yeah, got me little dragon teddy bear sitting there <laughs> in my he's chair like this, all evil most, and stuff. Yeah, he's the most well-sounding Spanish person I've ever hit, seen. Nico <laughs> Williams. Yeah, uh, but um, we're linked with him. If we get players like that in, and you know, I still think, I still think a big uh, a name that's going to surprise people is um, Eze. I really yeah. think we set the foundations to bring Eze to this club. Yeah. I really think Postacoglu wants a progressive like, midfielder. If, if they and Morgan Gibbs-White are two players I'd love to have at the club. <sighs> Mate, Both that would be unreal. Like they are, and, yeah. and pacey, but constantly running. They get the ball. Yeah. They don't want to take the time. They don't want to sit there. They want to get that ball and go. And under Postacoglu, that's the type of football we want to see. Yeah. And especially if we're doing, if Postacoglu switches and goes next season at, at times against certain teams um, counter-attacking, the likes of Eze, Gibbs, White, Nico Williams, they're the players you want in your team. But it's all down to Levy now. It's all down to him. That this now, is down to him, though, mate. Yeah. That was his down it to is him. such a worry. It's such a worry. But I don't know. He could surprise everyone. If he brings in at least Nico Williams and say Eze, right, just as a starter point, yeah. then fair. Fair dues. The fan base can chill the hell out with Levy. He wants to back Ange. If we're spending the entire window signing this player, trying to get that player, blah, 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 then he's just still back to his old tricks and it'll just ruin us. But the uh, one player I'm more excited about... Answers, oh, come, the summer, come the summer on Tottenham on Tour's Twitter account, we will have David in control of the transfers. So if you want all your transfer news, that's a plug and a half. Go over <laughs> to the Tottenham on Tour Twitter. And yeah, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of... Uh, Shirt. Um, there's going to be a lot of um, shaking things up here. It's going to basically, be basically, yeah. So, 
I'll give everyone a little quick one about it. In the summer, when the summer window opens, I'm going to be doing a lot of posts over on the Lads of Tottenham on Tour Twitter page, which I will put a link up somewhere at one point. Um, I'm going to be, you know, it's not going to be your standard, oh, we're linked with this player, blah, blah. I'm going to do a little bit of stats. I'm going to talk about the player, see how he fits us, get your guys' opinions on things and stuff like that. Do a couple of throw-ins if a player's just like a little bit of a link rather than a yeah. full-blown with signing him. And just things like, and hopefully you guys will be interested in that over the summer. And yeah, yeah hopefully you're around to watch. So fingers crossed. And hopefully we should be bringing a few videos like we did on Monday with the business end as we call oh, it. We, yeah. like it. we need to do a few more of those because we love doing those videos here on the channel. It's always good to have quite a lot of us together. It's always two people on Tottenham on tour at the same time. But <laughs> to, have that, to have all of us on one show is always a good one. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, Benjamin. We uh, we might get somewhere. We might get somewhere if we've got a good budget. Uh, yeah. Sure, we got Skippy. <laughs> no, <laughs> just no. <laughs> I, I can I can see the likes if we're bringing in the essays, the Morgan Gibbs White players like that. I can see the likes of Skippy leaving. I think oh, I'd love to see him, no. uh, Yeah, Skippy I mean, especially tomorrow. the one player I'm really excited about coming in is Lucas Bergvall. He's an exciting player for me. Yeah. I'm not seeing I've seen a few fans speak about him, but not a lot. He is a young player, but he is not a scared player. What he's doing in the Swedish league at the moment, yes, it's the Swedish league. We know this, but he looks fantastic. He's an exciting player. He's that player who gets you off your feet when he gets the ball. And if we implement him into the midfield, we don't have to worry about the skippies anymore. Yeah. Now this is no. I'm not. I'm not. We're not here to disrespect Skippy. Obviously, you know, he, he, he is what it is. A little bit, but he is what he is. You know, at the end of the day, he he plays to what he can do. But when you got players like a uh, Bergvall coming in, and if we do sign hypothetically uh, an Eze, a Morgan Gibbs White, he's not going to see game time. He isn't. When you've got Bentoncourt, Madison, Sa, yeah. Basuma, because I don't, I can't see Basuma going. Basuma, Lucas Bergvall, and Eze, or Morgan Gibbs White, someone like that. Then, phew. but we need a dominating six for them players. We really yeah. do. With Hoybier leaving, because we know he's gone. Hoybier is going to be gone. We need a dominating six. And if we sign someone who's a proper six, yeah, yeah. someone who's dominating, takes the ball, makes tackles, helps defend, helps attack, organizes, most organizes, yes, yeah. vocal, vocal constantly telling people because it's all good having a DM, but you need someone who's willing to have a go at the players as well. Someone who's willing to dictate things and not just the captain. Yeah. We see it with Vicario. When someone makes a mistake, Vicario screaming at them. Yeah. Back in the day, Larissa would be standing there. The only, the only time I ever seen Larissa kick off her play was Sonny when he didn't track back. Larissa was always ironing his blue, his, 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 his shirt, his mime shirt. Because that's what it was like the entire time. It was like in making a box. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Building and sand castles. Yeah, sand castles. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lloris was a mime of a goalkeeper at the end of his tether. He was, like, was trying to make a wall in front of his goal. And it was, like, it was not working. Here you go. You got to use your hands. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I would have loved to have seen, yeah, right? When you look at players and everything, like, I would have loved to have seen Prime Lloris with a Van der Ven Romero. Yeah. Oh, God, I don't think people would have scored a goal against us. Yeah, don't get me wrong, Vicario's fantastic, but my God, sometimes he's Bruce just... The first couple of seasons was lightning quick off his line. He was ridiculous. Yeah. Off the, uh, ridiculous. And yeah, it's all, there's always um, there's always a tiny bit of hope. It's the hope that kills you, of course. Um, but you've got to be positive. You've got to be excited. I mean, look where we are at the moment, yeah? The next team who can take us out of that Champions League spot is United. They're 11 points behind us. Now, we've got to really... We could lose all them points over these next four games. Yeah. You know, no, was it? No, sorry, yeah. Yeah, four games, I think it is. We could lose them, but I don't think we will. No. I think with the way we are at the moment, we could take points off these teams. We really could. And we should be excited for next season. We we should, as fans in our this manager's first season, we should be excited. We should think we're hoping we should be positive and say, Yeah, Levy's gonna buy hands these players. If he doesn't, then you can say, Oh god, no. 
Yeah, exactly. Nico and Verma off the bench would be crazy. That'd be crazy. The pace of them two. I think it will with pace. With pace. You have to say, David, that is that is the yeah. point of the show. We have difference of opinions and we have to see. It's always been. But on that note, our half an hour is up, David. It, that screamed past again. I oh, know, no. so fast. But we will be back tomorrow, David, won't we? Thursday morning. Yep. Blue. We will be. We'll be back Thursday. Uh, hopefully some news pops out or yeah. something. If not, we'll just sit here again, chat about upcoming games or yeah. things like that. So, yeah, it's exciting. And another gentle reminder, please subscribe to The Coffee Company. The link is in the chat. Uh, we've got a show at half past three today with myself, Bobby K and Coover for Brewing Bollocks your favourite midweek show where we just absolutely go haywire on absolutely everything. But thank you all so much for watching today's show. Have a great rest of your morning and great rest of your day. And as always, if you smell what the cough is brewing. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao for now.